Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about a group of photosynthetic protists which are known as chrysophytes. So let's look into this group. So let's first talk about the different habits and habitats of this group called as chrysophytes. So they are mostly aquatic but they are also found in terrestrial environments but only those terrestrial environments which is moist basically where the water content is high those terrestrial conditions provide conditions for the survival of these chrysophytes. So chrysophytes are mostly found where water is present. They may be free floating or they can be bottom dwellers. Free floating means they can float uh, in a liquid medium and what do you mean by bottom dwellers? That means they uh, constitute or they remain as deposits in oceans and water reservoirs and tanks. So, uh, so that's the reason they can be bottom dwellers also as well as free floating that is we can find them floating in the surface of the water. So this free floating form they secrete mucilage and have a and have light wet lipids. So these two are the reasons because of which some of the chrysophytes they can freely float on the water surface. First of all they secrete mucilage and secondly they have lightweight lipids. So these are the reasons which aid these chrysophytes in floating freely on the water surface. They show gliding movements, movements which are very slow. It's basically a type of locomotion and it's a gliding type of movement. They form diatomite and it's also known as diatomaceous earth. So what are these? Mostly in case of water reservoirs, we will find these uh, chrysophytes, they are deposited or they pile up, they form huge piles on the bottom layer. So we have discussed here that mostly they are bottom dwellers. Hence these piles, these are actually called as diatomite or they are also known as diatomaceous earth. The reserve food in these cases, they uh, reserve food in the form of oils and also a compound known as leukosin. Now let's take a look on the structure of these chrysophytes. Their body is covered with a transparent siliceous shell type structure which is basically called a frustule. So this siliceous shell type structure we are talking about is called as frustule which actually covers the body of the chrysophytes. Now they are microscopic very smaller structure like those of the kingdom Monera. So they are microscopic and they can be variously colored. That means a number of colors can be found, different colored type of chrysophytes is generally found. So they do not actually possess uh, flagella. Unlike bacteria which mostly has flagella, they do not have flagella. But there are certain conditions which specifically during the reproductive stage, they may develop flagella which actually help in their reproduction. So mostly they do not have flagella but in some cases, some exceptional cases during the reproductive stage they can develop flagella. They have presence of large central vacuole. The vacuole is large and it is present centrally located in the cell and the single large nucleus. So nucleus is also large and also the presence of large central vacuole. They have presence of chlorophyll A. So they are photosynthetic we have discussed. So this is a photosynthetic group. So they will have photosynthetic pigments like chlorophyll. So they have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C. So these are the two types of photosynthetic pigments which are found in chrysophytes. Now let's take a look on the modes or types of reproduction uh, followed by these group of chrysophytes. Binary fission is the most common method. So they reproduce through binary fission but only under favorable conditions. When conditions are fine or favorable, then, then only they can reproduce asexually through binary fission. Spore formation also happens under certain conditions. Now we talked about that under favorable conditions, they will reproduce via binary fission. But if conditions are not favorable, that means very high temperature, lack of moisture, very low temperature. Uh, very difference, huge differences in pH. So these are some adverse conditions. So these are unfavorable for these type of organisms. 
So under unfavorable conditions, they form spores. Now these spores will germinate when again conditions are favorable for the growth and survival of these cryophytes. Now sexual reproduction may also occur in some of the cases. So it's very, it's not common. So in some of case, some of the cases, they may reproduce sexually also. Now let's take a look on the importance, what are the various functions or roles played by these cryophytes we are talking about. So cryophytes, they are considered as one of the most important photosynthesizers on earth. So the maximum amount of photo photosynthesis is carried out by these groups of cryophytes, which are nothing but photosynthetic protists. So they are important photosynthesizers on our planet. The diatomite deposits, they are often accompanied by petroleum fields. Now, petroleum fields, which we are using right now, they are mostly accompanied by these uh, diatomite deposits. And it is also believed that the petroleum products or the petroleum which we are using now is basically dead and decaying organic matter from these type of diatomites or diatomaceous earth. So basically, these are the decaying remains or fossil fuels of these cryophytes. They are porous and chemically inert. So this is the property which we use for filtration. For example, we use uh, these, this property to filter sugar. We use this property to filter alcohol also and various other filtration properties. In the process of filtration, we use diatomaceous earth because of the fact that they are porous and chemically inert. What do we mean by chemically inert? They will not react with the things we are trying to fil filter th through this uh, diatomaceous earth. So they are chemically inert. They are used to make soundproof rooms. So mostly in studios and shooting studios. So they are used to make studios which are soundproof. And lastly, they are also important pollution indicators. So these, if these are present somewhere, so it indicates the amount of pollution in that particular area. So in this video, we have talked about a group of photosynthetic protesta, which is known as chrysophytes. We have talked about the different structural details of this group and we have also talked about some of the important characteristic features of this group of chrysophytes. I hope you have understood and liked this video. Thank you.